What's going on guys, it's Boythan. Hope you're having a great day. Mariano's flying his drone. We take a little pit stop on our road to middle of California. Beaumont. Beaumont. We're in Beaumont. Gonna play a fun little friendly home game that uh, I featured on the vlog before. And the uh, Road to a Million Challenge. It's not going so hot right now. Episode, I think four right now, session number four starts today. We're gonna play a, a friendlier game. 1025, I think, are the stakes. And uh, just gonna get some practice in. Get some reps in before the next episode you're gonna see. I actually get to play some high stakes at Hustler. But right now, play some 1025. I'm currently minus $23,000 in this challenge, so got some work to do, but, um, you know, Mariano's flying the drone, you guys are gonna see his vlog, and uh, that's about it, and uh, maybe I steal some of his drone footage for this video, who knows. So, uh, enjoy some poker, gonna have a good time with some friendly, lovely people and faces, so uh, let's get into the video. Let's play some cards, let's try to win, I think I'm gonna try to win, I don't know. I'm certainly gonna try to win, but at least I'm gonna have fun while doing it today. Anyways, I'm done ranting. I don't know what else to say. Let's get into the poker action. Off to the 1025 streets we go. We're in the home game. It's getting underway and we're right into the mix immediately with 7-4 of hearts. Mm, what a premium. I've never seen a hand this pretty. Anyways, owning a player limps, I raise up to 75 bucks and I get three players to call around. Get someone in position, one of the blinds, and of course the limper. So off to a flop, which comes queen three five, I believe. Action checks to me. I have a draw, and I think that's good enough to throw a measly little bet out there for 200 bucks into the field. And from four ways to the flop, we're gonna go heads up to the turn as I get one player to call. Turn comes in ace, which is super interesting because now it gives me a two way straight draw, super disguised. Any deuce, any six gives me straight. And, you know, this is really one of the cool spots and cool reasons of playing bad hands like this because they're very disguised. So I size up for $500 now on a card that I absolutely will be betting on regardless if I have a double gutter or not. Anyways, he does make the call for 500 bucks and uh, we're not getting a fold just yet, but hoping to hit the river is not one of my outs, unfortunately. It doesn't change the board too much and it's a brick. Anyways, here at this point, I've just got to you know, go for it. Hoping my opponent has a queen, hoping he can fold a queen. I'm going to throw out $1,500 there, about a pot size bet. It's a pretty large bet considering the size of the pot. And now we wait. Seven high and a dream. My opponent is in the tank. So at least I faded a snap and now we just need him to come with the wrong decision. Hoping he believes me at this point. Honestly, though, it's early in the night. Hopefully no one thinks I'm too crazy just yet. And then he ends up folding a queen. Phew. Let's freaking go. Nice to start off with a bluff getting through early with seven high. And we're moving right along with a real hand next time. With pocket eights under the gun, I raise up to 75 bucks, get one player to call. Then the player in the cutoff three bets to $375. That is not the most comfortable situation to be in with eights, but hey, at least I'm gonna call and set mine. No other decision here. And we're gonna go heads up to a flop, which comes 985. Let's go. Middle set, we are running hot today, I must say. Got the bluff through, and now we're flopping a set. Action sadly goes check, check, so not gonna get much action here on this flop when the turn is a brick. Doesn't change much, and here I decided to throw out $500 here with my set. Gotta do my own betting, can't imagine my opponent is gonna bet for me, and my opponent snap calls, so quick developments here. Onto the river we go, which comes another five, giving me a full house. Now, I actually don't know how much I want to bet out in this spot, and I just decided to throw 2k into the middle. And I see a snap call, and I show my hand. Of course, I win, but does our opponent really have a 5? He does. Oh my goodness. If only I knew, I could have bet so much bigger. So here we go. He rivers trips. It's the miracle card for me to get paid an extra $2,000. And just like that, back-to-back -back hands, we are winning. Guys, sorry to interrupt this video, but this is a pretty ridiculous and important announcement to make about WPT Global and how there's no rake for the entire month of April. I don't know what's going on, guys, but they told me to tell you guys this because it's great for us, great for you guys, because we're the players. So this is true. On WPT Global for the entire month of April, so you have the entire rest of the month to play this, they're charging zero rake on their tournaments and I don't understand why, to be honest with you. It's not great for them, but I must tell you guys about it because it, I would literally be a sin to keep this information away from you guys. So 
If you're interested and you want to join me, uh, I think their Sundays are the biggest days for the online tournaments. They have the $330 Grand Slam, they have the $110 Slam that continually gets bigger and bigger guarantees. So their $100 tournament continually gets bigger and bigger every single week, which is amazing. So I don't know, if you're interested in playing, if you want some free money, if you want to play poker basically for free and not pay any rake, then you should totally check the link down in the description below. Use the code Rampage. It's only available for people outside the US. If you're in Canada, if you're in Brazil, if you're in Japan, lots of different places in Mexico as well, you can hop on to WPTglobal.com. Use the code Rampage for a free deposit bonus, along with no rake at all for any tournaments that you play on the website for the entire month of April. So that's my PSA. Hopefully you guys take advantage of it because you know, I certainly will be. So I'll see you guys on the virtual felt. And let's get back to the video. In the following spot, let's keep the hot streak going with Ace King. I raise it up to $75 and get three players to call around the table. Going to a flop four ways, which comes King Jack high. Rainbow flop, top pair, top kicker. The big blind decides to lead for $200, which I thought was a little bit strange. I definitely could raise in this spot, but I decided to just set in the trap. Raising seems really strong, and I'm not really sure how this opponent plays. So I call for 200 bucks, and everyone ends up folding. So heads up to a turn where you go, which comes the nine of diamonds. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, and my opponent fires again for $300 this time. Another really, really small bet. But considering now that there's a straight out there, lots of two pairs beat me, I decided to chill and just make the call for 300 So now off to a river we go, which comes another jack. Now, on this jack, my opponent decides to fire out large, $1,200. And this is not a fun spot to be in, to be honest with you. But top pair, top kicker, seems like a really easy call in hindsight. But looking at the situation in the moment, I just felt like my opponent wasn't bluffing her. You know, betting three streets, he went small, small, then really large. Seems like he's playing it like he has a jack for sure. And I don't know if my hand is good here. But then also, I have to think about my hand is so good. Ace, king. I just beat other kings that he can have. So I don't think my opponent's bluffing, but I do beat some hands that he's value betting with. I guess I have to call, but I don't feel good about it. And he rolls over. Jack Deuce. Miracle River hits the two outer and gets paid here. Actually, technically five outer because any deuce would have gotten him paid as well. Hey, nice hand to my opponent for betting, controlling the size of the pot, and then getting paid on the river when he had it. This next hand is going to get spicy, let me tell you. With Ace Jack of Hearts, I'm on the straddle. There's an undergun raise to $200. Three people call around for $200, and now I think I just have a really good hand to try to isolate, thin out the size of the field, and get it heads up or something like that. I decide to bump it up to $1,500. That is not your typical 1025 game here. Things are getting big, and you know what's even crazier? Three players call around. So we've got $6,000 in the middle already, and we got more to play for behind. We're off to a flop, which gives me the nut flush draw. Oh my god. The small blind whose first act just goes all in? Dear lord. It's a total of like $6,400, I guess. And I'm not going to be folding. You know, it's about a pot size jam. It's multi-way. I'm drawing to the nuts. How could it be that bad? We're going to be gambling here with two over cards as well. I don't think my pair outs are going to be good here ever. But hey, we only live once. So I'm in there and both players fold. So here we're going heads up against my opponent. We decide to run it twice for an $18,000 pot and she has pocket sevens. So we're not drawing super alive, but we still need outs. The first run out is a straight on the board. Oh my goodness. What a bad beat. So at least, uh, at least I'm not going to lose all of my money if I don't hit a heart. Second run out comes no hearts. Ah, okay, so I'm going to lose the second run out, and we're going to chop the first run out, which means I end up getting quartered, so after someone does all the math, I lose about $3,400 in this hand, which really doesn't seem so bad when the entire pot was $18,000. I could have won the whole freaking thing, but hey, not going to complain too much. At least I end up with a little bit of money at the end of the day, but I did lose with the nut flush draw, unfortunately running nut flush draw into a set. With queen jack offsuit, I'm on the button and there's two players who limp it over to me. I'm gonna raise it up to 100 bucks here with a hand not so great, but then the first limper goes for the limp jam. 
Not even a limp raise. It's a limp all in for about $860. The other limper gets out of the way wisely and I decided to just YOLO call. It's only 860 bucks to be honest and I got invited to this home game so we're gonna give some action with a really bad hand if I'm being honest with you here. Anyways, we decided to run it twice for a $1,700 pot and well, I have queen high on both runouts and it turns out it doesn't even matter because my opponent has queen high himself. Just, just two of them, though, for pocket queens. So unfortunate there to lose this hand. To be honest, I can't even say this was unlucky. I just decided to spew off about 800 bucks. And yeah, now I know that my opponent is a little bit on the tighter side, but I thought I could gamble for $860. Did not think I was drawing this dead. All right, my turn to pick up a premium this time. It's kings. I'm in the hijack. There's an early position limp, and I bump it up to $150. We get the big blind and limper to call, and we're going heads up to a flop of ace, queen, jack. So why, why, why is there always an ace anytime I have kings, man? It's literally ace magnets. Anyways, the big blind decides to go all in. Yes, yes, you heard that correctly. It's an all in of $3,500. He's first to act, and he just shoves 3500 into a $450 pot. The limper calls the freaking all in. What? Obviously, kings, I'm getting out of the way of this madness. From 450 onto the flop now it turns into a $7,500 pot somehow. Anyways, we see ace four from the big blind with the nut flush draw on top pair versus the nuts king 10. And we can all imagine that there's going to be no justice as the clubs do not come and the flopped straight is going to hold. So what a ridiculous hand this was to witness. But the next shuffle and deal, I pick up queens, back-to-back -back kings, then queens. What a lovely sight to see. There's a middle position raised to $150, and that's beautiful because now we finally get to three bet with a good hand. I make it $600, and everyone folds. Yep. That is it. I have nothing else to report besides the fact that I got to look at Queens and I made the minimum. We're moving along because I don't want to talk about it anymore. With pocket sevens in the cutoff, there's one player who limps. I raise it up to 150 bucks and the small blind player calls and the limper folds. So interesting developments here. The flop is Jack 8 4. Not really the best board for pocket sevens here. So with third pair, I decided to just go check, check. Turn is the deuce of clubs. My opponent fires $200, and how can I say no to such a price with third pair? Maybe I can be ahead sometimes. Maybe I can spike a seven on the river, and it is not a seven. It was four side, though. Nine of diamonds will not cut it. Anyways, my opponent fires out $600 now, and I don't think I can do much of anything. How can sevens ever do anything here? Maybe I could raise because I blocked 10 seven, but that's ambitious. Anyways, I let this one go. I'm going to let go. And we're going to lose another pot and moving right along to the next situation. In the next situation, I pick up ace queen of spades in the cutoff with the $50 straddle on. I raise it up to 200 bucks. The small blind goes all in for $1,200. So I'm not going to go anywhere. Obviously, I decided to make the call, of course, quick and easy decisions here. And we're going to to run it two times as well. This specific home game loves it when they run twice, and I'm always happy to oblige because it doesn't really change the percentages. Anyways, the first board comes pretty sweaty as my opponent flops a flush draw, but then ends up bricking out. So the heart brick, and I win the first run out, ace queen versus ace 10. Now the second one, oh my goodness, how could it be? Hearts again? And they hit this time. How many hearts are in this deck? Jeez. All right, ace 10 of hearts is going to win this one, and I miss out on $1,200 coming my way. Very lucky for my opponent, that is. Definitely not me. I haven't been very lucky lately here. So uh, we chopped this one. No blood. Even I probably should have scooped this one a lot of the time. But hey, I'm not going to complain because we kept king jack offsuit in the small line the next deal. When the low jack raises to $100, cutoff makes it a call does not raise and now I in the small blind have decisions to make and it's gonna be going on the elevator the price is going up to $500 and I get the low jack to be in there and call cutoff ends up folding so heads up to a flop we go of queen six seven two hearts well here we are I 
have king high in a dream. I make it $500 here, about a half pot sized bet. And my opponent calls, which brings some al alarm bells here now at this point. With only king jack, that doesn't mean much because I have nothing. Turn is the nine of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. And I have a decision to check or bet here, of course. And I think both have lots of merit at this point. End of the day, I decided to check this one. I just felt like my opponent is going to be calling with better hands when I bet half pot. And, you know, I don't really want to pile more money in there against what could be better than a king high. Anyways, she does fire $1,600 out there, and I'm a little bit annoyed at this price. Pretty large bet, and I can't really float to find that river 10. Also, there are two flushers out there, so not sure which of my outs are even live and clean. So I guess I just fold sheepishly. You know, I just surrender this pot to my opponent. So nice hand to her. And moving on to the very last hand, significant one of the night. Picking up King Jack offsuit again, this time once again in the small blind, and the $50 straddle is on. There's a hijack raise to 150 bucks. Cutoff makes the call, and I am in no decision point here. Look, I am down lots of money. It's the end of the night. I'm going to be super aggressive, and I make it $700. Well, this aggression works because my opponent goes all in in for about $22, $3,200, one of those two figures, between two to 3K, and I am not loving life, of course, here, but look, how can I ever expect to win money if I don't ever take a stand and gamble? We've been gambling all night, and I've been losing. Can I gamble this last hand here of the night and win it back? I make the call. So we've got some interesting hands here in what looks to be about a $5,000 all-in pot. He has pocket sevens, and I have king jack off suits, which makes it a fair flip just for a somewhat large amount. And we're running it twice once again, and you already know the deal. If you could guess how this night's been going so far... You damn well know pocket sevens is going to hold on both runouts. I pay my opponent. I lose more thousands of dollars. And that is the session. You know, they invite me. They invite the big fish over to drive an hour and a half to this place to donate some money. And that I certainly did. So uh, this one wasn't super pretty. It was much prettier for everyone else at the table. All right, wrapping things up. Unfortunately, session just... Another disappointing uh, couple hours of poker. Um, seven hours of poker, it seems. Six hours of poker, it seems. <sighs> Wrapping things up, it's super late right now. Just got home. Um, the next video you're going to see is going to be a big one, but we're going to recap this real quick. Uh, I was in the game for $20,000. I cashed out for $8,670. That is an L of uh, just over 11000 Not the best start to this million-dollar challenge just going the wrong way. Um, I don't know. Just another one of those sessions where it seemed like everything I did was the wrong move. When I didn't have a good hand and I was bluffing, I didn't get it through. When I did have a good hand, like kings and queens back to back, that's, I make the minimum. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's starting to question some things. I have, I'm starting to have some self-doubt about my poker game right now. And I don't think I'm necessarily doing anything that poorly besides probably gambling a little bit too much and giving action. But hey, it was a friendly game. It was a good time with some friendly people. So happy to gamble and stuff and yeah. just got unlucky in those spots. So, uh, you know, that's really all it is. But I am kind of questioning this poker thing. I don't know. Losing continually hurts and stuff. So, you know, it's hard to always just make the wrong decision. Always have the worst hand. Unlucky for six hours. And uh, it's trending that way right now, uh, considering I'm one in four out of profitable sessions. So yeah, um, I'll s I have the entire uh, stats of this million dollar challenge and a road to a million right now here. Not looking pretty in terms of the dollar amounts that I'm down, but hey, uh, tomorrow, real time tomorrow, next episode you're going to see, going to be playing uh, a bigger game over at Hustler on a Friday. And uh, all that can be er erased in one session, which is the silly part, or all of it could be doubled and tripled in one session tomorrow. So big one coming up. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a like if you made it this far, much appreciated. And the next video is gonna be a big sweat. It's gonna be a test. Played a lot of poker uh, past couple of days and past couple of videos. And it's all gonna come up to this last freaking session. Good luck me, hope we run good. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.